Well, hello, and welcome to Stop, Let's Team Up, episode 66. We are going to be talking Justice Society of America number four, the current series that's coming out, and this week we're going to match it up with All-Star Comics 35 and the first appearance of Perdigaton. So let's get started with Justice Society of America 4. Okay, so this was uh, cover dates July 2023. Executive editor is Marie Javins. Cover artist is Michael Mikhail Janin. Um, the title of the story is The New Golden Age, Chapter 4 Fates and Fortunes. Writer Jeff Johns, pencilers Mikhail Jenin, uh, Jerry Ordway is in it. Uh, this, 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 well, these credits are quite a little wrong. So I will give you more accurate credits when I open the comic book back up. Um, so this, this is the fourth in of, what is it now? It's still not, a, I think this series is supposed to go to six. I think it may be expanded. I think that's what DC's doing. Um, so let's do the roll call. The This is a very, every, all of this has been very, the, this new Helena Wayne of the future Huntress, her story. And I'm going to talk about that uh, while I discuss a comic. But let's do the characters. Supporting characters are Justice League Dark, Earth Zero, Dead Man, Detective Chimp, Dr. Fate, Khalid Nassour, uh, and he is inhabited by the gob Hutet. I'm pronouncing that right. Just uh, The Justice Society lineup uh, throughout this is The Atom, Al Pratt, Dr. Fate, Kent Nelson, Dr. Midnight, Beth Chappell, Flash, Jay Garrett, Green Lantern, Alan Scott, Carter Hall, Hawkman, Carter Hall, uh, Our Man, Rex Tyler, Yakim Thunder, y- y- Yez, The Thunderbolt, Power Girl, Sandman, Wesley Dodds, The Spectre, Jim Corrigan, Star Girl, and Wildcat, Yolanda Montez. Uh, also starring Madame Zanadu, the bad guys are Perga Degaton, uh, and the stranger who is per Degaton. Um, the fates are here. And then a bunch of uh, flashback stuff. And there's some prophecy stuff. It's a lot of stuff going on in this. But let's get into this comic. Um, I, there isn't a synopsis up yet. Is there a synopsis? I have not. I'm just kind of... Since I'm going through it, we're going to get it as I go. Uh, because this thing's drop around. So we start this. It's got a great splash page. Uh, it is outside Madame Z- Zanadu's uh, house. It's a nice brownstone in Greenwich Village, and it's a beautiful first panel. And then we cut to Justice League Dark, Dead Man, Detective Chimp, uh, Madame Xanadu, and she's messing with the snow globe. And it it zaps her, and she these th- th- we hear these things in these ghostly or evil or m- demonic things. Beware, Eclipso is within. Okay? Only the Green Lantern can save the Red Lantern. The Sandman's nightmare will wear his mask. Jay Garrick will find joy again. Do not trust the witch girl. And then front of her house blows up. Front windows blow out. And um, Dead Man and Detective Chipper standing over Men of Zanadu. And she weakly says, we need to get the globe back to Helena Wayne. Before the power she's been abdued with fades away. Degaton will kill her without it, and then nothing will stop him. That's a nice line. And then we cut to... So page four is the title card, and it is a lovely uh, Jerry Ordway single shot, and it is the original members of the Justice Society sitting around the table, the ones that are in the cover to just All-Star 3, and they are all dead, and there is blood and wreckage everywhere. And um, So... Wow, this is a great panel. I love Jerry Ordway, so I'm getting sucked into it. And there are two little quotes at the bottom. One, if you fell down yesterday, stand up today, H.G. Wells. And then this one, if you fell down yesterday, go back in time and kill kill everyone who made you fall, per Degaton. I love that. Um, and we cut to the next page. Is, is some of this beautiful Michael Jan and art, and I love the coloring. I think the colorist is doing an incredible job. It is not something I would have thought about, but... Um, um, Justice League Dark is using one palette and one kind of texture uh, it feels to me uh, Jerry Ordway's is very old school and then Jan and, um, is just beautiful it's just beautiful and it's just a lovely th- uh, 
different kind of coloring and i dig that let me see who there is a colorist on this um jordy belair and john katz well gentlemen you're doing a great job um uh, and you know helena's you know there's exposition jeff johns likes writes like it's the silver age or the bronze age and i don't have a problem with it uh I, I like a little narration and we see, you know, how she's staring up at Degaton and there's a flash and then there's a flashback or just an image of her, just the such the society lineup she put together and her Degaton just gloating. And then you go to this double page spread, which I have already posted on the interwebs, which is Degaton standing on front in the, in the current justice society headquarters on top of their table on his little time travel platform, surrounded by the Justice Society members. Helena, uh, Khalid, the current Doc Fate, he looks great because you get to see the stature of him compared to all these grown-ups. It's awesome. He's a great-looking character. I have um, put, uh, put uh, saved or favorited or whatever you want to call it, um, all of Levitt's is, uh, Dr. Fate's that introduce him. It looks really good. So next to him is Alan Scott. I dig the beard. Okay, I'm just saying, I dig the beard. Power Girl, Star Girl, um, Beth Chapel, Doctor Midnight, Yolanda Montez, um, Wildcat, Yes, the Thunderbolt, Yakim, and then Jay Garrett all staring at him. And it's a great page. It's a great page. And then the next two pages is him taking people out: Green Lantern, uh, Flash, um, Power Girl. And stuff like that. So he fights. You know, he's he's he has a different ability, and we find out why, or it's mentioned. Um, you know, but he battles Green Lantern and Power Girl, and then he battles the Flash, and he's just slowing and speeding up team. Um, Power Girl's going to charge him, and that's when Helena realizes because Helena's narrate narrating all this to us. So, um, and she's us. Um, she's saying that's. The, the Power Girl's charging uh, Degaton, and she notices Kryptonite Ring. Degaton's ready for every member of the Justice Society. Or is he? Time to test the theory. And she shoots her little pistol crossbow. It takes the finger off. Um, and then Power Girl punches Degaton, and he slides across the meeting room, and he knocks over Terry Sloan, uh, Mr. Terrific statue. Um... And that's when she's talk Khalid and her are talking, and she said, "We need to act now, Khalid. We can beat him." How? Asked Khalid. He killed my team in t seconds, but this time it's different. I'm not supposed to be here, so I don't think he can see what I'm going to do. And I think he's gone f after Doctor Fate. He's gone after Doctor Fate first because he can't see what you're going to do either, thanks to your helmet. Stand up, Khalid. Feel your power. Use it. And then it's, um, you, Khalid, Degaton's, the panel, Degaton's getting up, wiping a bloody nose, and Khalid's going, hey, Degaton, this is for Dr. Fate, all of us. And it's a Just Society charging, and Fate's casting a spell, and he pushes Degaton through, and there are these shattered images, the stuff from where we're going to talk about in All-Star Comic 35, um, which is cool, which is cool, and I, I can't wait to talk to you about that. Um... Wonder Cat goes, where is he? And Stargirl asks, he's dead. And then um, Khalid, res uh, Xanadu responds, Degaton is impossible to destroy. Because Xanadu in the Justice League Dark have come in. Degaton is impossible to destroy now, Stargirl. He made a deal with the Lord of last Lord of Chaos. He is an ever-altering paradox. And if he isn't in prison soon, the Justice Society will not only be erased from history forever, but replaced by something far darker and then all of a sudden we're back in 1947 again. More Jerry Ordway art. And Degaton is standing on his platform. Um, the place is a wreck. He's holding his hand where his fingers, he's lost his finger. And someone walks in and goes, you failed. And it's an old Degaton. And he's going, the Chess Society should be dead by now. Our future should have changed. I should be sitting at, at that table on November 22nd, 1940. Yet I'm still here, stuck in an old lab, and someone took my finger. It's Helena Wayne. She's become a blind spot. Kill her first this time. And De this is a conversation with Degaton. Um, then younger Degaton goes, The ritual Salem design dictates that doc Dr. Fate... Ca and then um, old 
old fake uh, old Dagaton comes out and goes, Kalinasaur is inexperienced in this era. Nabu has abandoned him. He won't be a challenge. And then we cut away to a section that I really liked is it's it's Power Girl Helena sitting on a roof. Power Girl flies up and they have a lovely cut. It's a very neat conversation that Power Girl remembers. Power Girl, I think, if I'm remembering this, Power Girl remembers pre-crisis. Sorry, I took a sip of tea. Um, so I think she's coming to see... It's like her old friend is back. Um, and, she, you know, it's just a nice conversation. She, uh, Power Girl congratulates her on a job well done. Then she asks... What makes you to, what makes you a hero twenty years from now? Helena responds, My parents and Power Girls, Batman and Catwoman. Helena's response, hard to believe. And Power Girl goes, No, predictable. What do they what what do they do when they unite? They take over Gotham, finally clean it up. Does Batman smile for once? And then Helena's response is, My dad smiled, of course he smiled. And Power Girls Struck a nerve. Okay, moving on. How about you tell me my future? Tell me something good. Uh, and then we cut to Beth Chapel's lab. Her and uh, Yolanda are in there. And there's something about... They were dead and resurrected by the Lazarus um, effect. Uh, and it seems that they have to take something called an Lazarus pill to hold back Eclipso's voice. And it's not working for Yolanda as well as it should. And I think that's kind of cool. And I really haven't finished reading that. Uh, I got to read that Lazarus stuff. Um, and to, before we get to the end of this, I guess. And then we cut to a meeting in the Justice Society. And I never thought I'd see this group around the table of the Justice Society. Green Lantern, the uh, the young Dr. Fate, Jay Garrett, Dead Man, Madame Xanadu, and uh, Detective Chip. Chimp is on the is on the table. It's great. I love it. Uh, if I wish this was on the app because I would download that image. I just, it's great. And they're talking about, they figured something out. The Dagaton is performing a sacrificial ritual across the Justice Society's entire timeline. He started this in the far future and has been working his way backwards through the decades. And now this generation becomes the last line of defense before he goes to the beginnings and completes his spell. Green, that was Chimp, the Chimp talking, and then Green Lantern responds. If he's looking to erase us from history which we faced before. Why bother with the future rather than focus on the past? So, while they're talking, then we cut away to what else is going on. Uh, Jay goes, to, uh, tells Madame Zanadu, says, we, says, Madame Zanadu says we need to perform a ritual of our own. Stargirl, Yakim, and the Thunderbolt are on their way to retrieve a, a personal effect of Degatons. And, um, I, Yes, the Thunderbolt is going. I can't remember the last time I was in Germany. We got to stop for some pretzels. Um, Dr. Midnight, and then Jake continues. Dr. Midnight, while kind of collected a blood sample. Um, and it's, but the panel we see is about the Lazarus pill. And um, Detective Schiff mentions that the snow globe was endued with Helen and they need, they need them close together. Keep her... But then Power Girl flies in and goes, Helena Kate Wayne may be the key to all of this chimp, but she's gone AWOL to Gotham. And then we cut to Batman ch chasing the old Toad. A villain I'd never heard of, but he's in here. Old Toad. And Batman captures him. And then the final panel is H Helena standing on one roof on the edge of the rooftop, turning to her fu her future father. I'm your daughter. I've come back in time to save your life. And then it says, next issue, The Final Fate of Huntress and the Justice Society. Um, so that's it. That's it with for four. I really like that issue. It was really good. Uh, it reads a little too... It reads pretty well. Um, you know how I am about... I like some thought balloons, which we're never going to get. I'm glad that there's narration from the characters. That's fine. Let it be from the characters. and have to be some invisible you know, voice from the editorial. But I like a little narration. I think it moved briskly. And it was fun. It was beautifully drawn. I enjoyed this more as a single issue. It's like um, I said, I think it was last issue, was very kind of getting me from point A to point B with not a lot. I didn't feel as much character movement. This that I get, we get to see a weakness of Peridegatons is being introduced. And now we know that this has been going on for long, so I'm assuming that the old Peridegaton 
started the ritual in effect and is using younger versions of himself as he goes back in time. And it seemed pretty cool. I really liked it. I enjoyed it a lot. I've enjoyed the series. I can't wait to read it in a clump. I think it's going to eight issues now. Um, I don't know. I can't remember for sure. But it was good. It is. Uh, Prodegaton is getting superpowers, which I've seen to be some people online mention it. And I was like, really? Has he got powers? But now that they say that he's been dued by the Lord, the last Lord of Chaos, it makes some sense. But, you know, he keeps... It becomes... Per Degaton's whole stick is he does something and erases it. It does something and erases it. Does something and erases it again. I don't know, but I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna go back and kind of track that um, because I think it'd be it'd be neat to talk to in the next issue. So let's move on to our next comic, which is All Star Comic 35, featuring the Justice Society of America. This issue was put on sale April 25th, 1947. The cover date was June, July 1947. Editor Sheldon Mayer. The writer was Jean Broom. Artists were Erwin Hassan, Lee Ellis, Paul Reinman, Joe Kubert, Frank Harry. It has been reprinted twice, Best of DC 21 and All-Star Comics Archive Volume 8 for 2002, which I have. The Best of DC 21 was uh, 1982. Uh, Features the Justice Society of America. Roll Call, Hawkman, Flash, Green Lantern, Adam, Dr. Midnight, Johnny Thunder, Wonder Woman. A villain, villains, Per Degaton, Kale, his assistant, Per Degaton's men, and the Persian army, because it's a time travel story. Uh, other characters that appear is uh, Professor Z, Professor a- Appleby, Braun, and Staley, uh, Alexander Great, and the mayor of Gotham City, because everything takes place in Gotham City. Um, here is a synopsis from the lovely Mad Mike's, um, not Mad Mike's, Amazing Mike's uh, d- uh, world of comics. The Justice Society discovers a relic written in Macedonian script that concerns an adventure none of them remember. Wonder Woman uses ma- the magic sphere to learn how the object was created. Per Degaton, the assistant of Professor Z, had stolen the professor's time machine and changed history. As a result, objects began to disappear around the world. All scientific knowledge is disappearing. The JSA is summoned to Z's hospital bed where he reveals Degaton's plan. The Justice Society, the JSA splits in, up to combat Degaton. Flash searches a valuable penis, for valuable penicillin to save Dr. Professor Z. He locates a supply in the Colossal Caves, which are constructed with metal that resists per Degaton's cha- change. However, Degaton is using the cave as a base. Flash escapes with the penicillin and returns to warn the just JSA about Degaton's army. Adam encounters Degaton's army as they try to steal a globe to f- try to steal gold to fight against their army. He f- fails to stop them, but he learns that Degaton changed the outcome of a key battle in history. Hawkman protects the go- mayor of Gotham City from Degaton's forces, but he fails to stop Degaton. Dr. Midnight is dispatched to protect the top scientists in hopes that they will can restore the scientific losses brought about by the changes. With Z, when Z awakened, he informs the JSA that Degaton altered the outcome of the Battle of Arabia in 331 BC. Green Lantern is dispatched to locate Z's time machine. He finds it, but Degaton sends him 10,000 years into the future. J, Green Lantern unknowingly, unknowingly changes the control and arrives just 10 years into the future. Green Lantern then meets the JSA of the future, being hurt, hunted by Degaton's forces, which now control the world. GL transports them back to 331 BC to help restore the rightful outcome of the Battle of Arabia. JSA assists Alexander the Great in defending the per- defeating the Persians, who themselves are aided by Degaton forces. When the JSA wins the battle, the 20th century is restored to normal. All memories of the change are erased, but Degaton still remembers them in a dream. So... Um, I probably read this when it came out in that D- Best of DC 21, uh, to be honest with you. Um, I have all the archives, but I've not read all the archives. And I think I've thumbed through this one, and I, you know, I'm familiar with it. It's because it's referenced over and over and over and over again um, in All-Star Squadron every time he comes up. And we got to see, uh, when Degaton fell through the memories, we got to see uh, the cover some of the image of the cover, and then an Alex Ross, I think it's a repaint where Alex Ross did a cover um, on a collection, and um, it was his, his version of that cover. 
but it's a great comic. It was, and it was, you know, I've said, I've said this before that I like Golden Age characters, but sometimes I don't like Golden Age comics because I'm, you know, they're written in very little. And even some of the early Justice Society, when they're just going out, each is going out in this little adventure. Some are great, some are okay. It, it just swings wildly. This is really tight. This is John Broom. I really am going to become to appreciate his work as I do read more of these. But it's a little tighter. You have four artists because you have four. They they they're only one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of them now. It's a really tight team. Starman is gone. It's just these star seven, and eventually. Johnny Thunder will leave, and Black Canary will take his place, I think, if I'm remembering it right. Uh, she appears in this volume, because I read it in Archives Volume 8, which contains All-Stars 34 through 38, and they're great. They're great. Um, Splash Panel, which I shared earlier today, is great. It says this, Another meeting of the Justice Society of America. No luxuries, trappings adorn their meeting place. No boastful trophies hang on their walls. Yet so full of dignity is the assemblage, so conscious of its proud rank at the forefront of all battlers against evil, that bearing of each makes the gathering reminiscent of a conclave of the ancient heroes on Mount Olympus. Roll Call, Wonder Woman, Green Lantern, Adam, The Flash, Hawkman, Chairman, Johnny Thunder, Dr. Midnight. Perhaps the strangest, the most thrilling adventure in the case histories of the Justice Society of America, which was one completely left m memory as soon as it happened. That is, until this meeting when Wonder Woman found a clue to, to the day that dropped out of time. And it's just really nice. It's, um, let me go to the front credits in this so I can be more accurate on who draws what sections. Um, I think for the most part, it was all great. Um, Erwin Hassan does the prelude e. L. Lee Ellis does the flash Paul Reinman does the Adam Joe Kubert does Hawkman Frank Carey does Dr. Midnight and then Erwin Hassan does Justice Society segment Green Lantern segment and then the final Justice Society segment so you see it breaks up and I kind of like that um, and looking here this is a nice see, these archives are nice this introduction is by Roy Thomas and I didn't read it before I did this um, because of, I just didn't think it was, uh, something to pop up. Well, wait a minute, here's something. This is, this is what Roy said. Issue 35, we know now, was the first by John Broom, a young comics and science fiction writer whom story editor Julius Swartz had incurred, encouraged at DC after he'd come out of the army. Broom's might and effort, the day that dropped out of time, was a wonderful romp through a minefield of time paradoxes, introductions, a new neo Napoleonic villain called Perdegaton. At this only comic convention appearance in 1998, Broom was asked how he came up with that name. He said it, he had no idea. The guy who asked that question was the same longtime Broom admirer who's writing this introduction. Oh, that's cool. Um, and it continues, uh, the art situation continued to improve a pace to Kubert on Hawkman, Ellis on Flash, Paul Ryman no longer on GNL, GL, but drawing Adam, Frank Carey doing yeoman work on Dr. Midnight. Now, Erwin Hassan, besides drawing the JSA chapters, added the Green Lantern segment to his quiver. Well, why not? After all, in, night, in early 1940s, he had been only, only the second artist to do an Emerald Gladiator as a regular assignment. Um... And I want to talk about the art because sometimes, you know, Golden Age comics are a little weird and the art's a little off. But I do. And this, compared to some of the early stuff, this is so much better. I really like Erwin Hassan's um, uh, prologue part. I think he's really trying to draw Wonder Woman like um, it would have looked like in her strip. And he's trying to, they're trying to match, he's trying to match the different artists who do the solo stuff um, because they look like, the different people are doing the different characters, which is cool. Like, Flash looks like it's drawn by Lee Ellis. Um, Adam looks like he's done by Reinman. So it's really good. I love Professor Z, and I know it, when I saw him drawn like this, it's the way when he's come back and come back, and with every time Zegaton comes back. Um, and it's just a wonderful drawing, and I like how they split up. So, and it's a lot, it's just be, well put together, really looks beautiful. Then we get to the Flash section, which is some of the most beautiful Golden Age art I have ever seen. It is stunning. Um, it is 
beyond solid. I thought it was a little. Inf- I thought it was Infantino when I saw it, but it's Lee Ellis. But I now know why L- why Infantino drew, drew speedsters the way he did. It's because this this is some of the most stunning. It's the best art in the book, I think. I think Jay, who is a character I adore, comes off really well, and it's just absolutely stunning. Really, just great storytelling. Really well finished. It really reminds me of um, Frank Robbins, a little more under control, but that's a good thing. Then we get to the Adam story, Paul Reinman, uh, and it's they're in Gotham City and Degaton's stealing some tanks, and Adam's trying to stop them. And then the next story, and it's a pretty good. I, I'm not Paul Reinman. It's a little more cartoony. I like his Degaton a great deal. Um, and I do like his Adam, and it's definitely better than some Paul Ryman I remember from reading earlier issues. Then we cut to Joe Kubert, and his stuff's getting better and better. And Degaton's tanks going through this out of the subways, coming up out of the subways and into the streets, and then capturing the other scientists. The Hawkman section is beautiful. Doc Midnight. Um, I'm really learning to appreciate Doctor Midnight in these solo stories. He's drawn a specific, very cartoony way, and it's starting to grow on me. Uh, his Dagaton is really good too. They've been consistent. He is a. He's got a good look. I mean, it's a good solid look. Then we get to Green Lantern and the Justice Society and him going back in time. And that's just good. This stuff's really good. I like that that becomes. Um, that we. they, He travels and when he meets the Justice Society, he meets a future version of them and they go back in time. It's not his regular companion. It's companion is friends 10 years later and when they correct everything that version of them that would um have been chased just disappears it was really kind of ahead of its time um it's just i just loved it and it ends up with them remembering it it's great the next issue so we're in a batman are back um it was a great comic it was a lot of fun it's on the app read it um all of them are all the all-star comics are on the app all those Justice Society appearances, read them. I mean, Golden Age can be hard um, and to a modern audience, so jump around. Check out the, you know what? Go to DC, check out the 100-page issues of Justice League between one, uh, 111 and whatever it was, 121, maybe earlier than that, 100 and something. Uh, because there's always a good Justice League from the Silver Age and a good Golden Age comic. And that's how I digested it. Stuff that was a little older than me. The writing style was more geared for an audience 10 or 15 years, an audience that existed 10 or 15 years earlier, whatever. Um, but it's a great way to get it, it to kind of understand the journey of art. Art is a progression. It is not... Um, it's a pro- it's a for- it's for- always forward moment, and it always repeats itself. That's terrible to say, but that's not true. But art and history and everything, it's a progression. You can't look... I can't go, oh... This is someone picking up a modern comic go, well, the Golden Age comics, they're not, they don't have anything to do with this. Yes, they have everything to do with that. You know, it is, you may think it is cheesy and outdated. It is, it because it is from the past. Um, uh, styles change, writing styles, um, the level of engagement of the reader changes. All these things change. So, but I like to, I always like to go back in an art form and kind of look at, I like looking at old paintings. I like it, look, you know, and when you go look at something like a Rembrandt and then you look at a Picasso, there is a, there is a trail between them in a way because all arts and all arts interconnected because we kind of repeat it. People take something and readapt it and change it. And comics have been fine tuned and for the, for good, bad, different, indifferent, uh, and peaks and valleys. Um, so, but it's just good to be able to read all of it. And this one made it was, this one was so good. Just such a solid comic. It holds up. I mean, it's, it's like watching a 1940s movie, but it holds up, I think, in a lot of ways. Um, I said when I did the roll call, I kept the word secretary out. And I'm going to say, I want to bring that up because someone's going to go. So I may get, I don't think anybody's a comment, but I don't like it. So I'm not going to say it. I think it's stupid. She's a member of the team. Um, who just happens to be the secretary. Um, you know, we'll see. I just find that a bit stupid, and I'm just retroconning it in my brain, because I'm just gonna. 
All right. Well, folks, hey, on Tuesday, it's more Jack and Ted. On Thursday, hopefully, if work, life, everything's a little ziggy-zaggy, uh, the next Legion uh, story coming up, which is Colossal Boy getting kicked out and a big adventure and two new members. And then next weekend, I'm not sure what I'm going to do yet for next weekend. I'm going to, if I do not, if a JSA doesn't come out this week or something, or something new that just came over, because I'm trying to keep his new stuff on the weekends, I know, because I'm doing so much flashback, um, and I may do the Justice Society if it's whatever it comes in. Um, but I'm going to do, if not, I'm going to do something Marvel. Because I need to, I'm doing a lot of DC and I need to do something Marvel or independent. So I have not finished the Thunderbolt on me. I'm, you know, I'm put, putting a dent in, dent in it, which is cool. Um, and I'm enjoying it. But other than that, um, nothing crazy. I do have a recommendation this week. Um, I've been picking, every time I go to my comic shop, I go by the, I hunt for, if I can af- see if I can afford a trade back, uh, uh, epic collection, uh, some trade paperback, something bigger for my shelf. This time I went to the Jeff Lemaire section and, and Velocity Comics. Man, go to that store if you're in or near Richmond. If you're within an hour of Richmond and you like comics, uh, you like trade paperbacks, manga, anything, it's a great store run and... Patrick are just amazing guys. Great shop. But uh, l- last week I pulled, I got Sentient uh, by Jeff Lemire and uh, Gabriel Walter. It's a wonderful story about kids in a spaceship. And it's a very precise, concise um, just story. It's wonderfully drawn. Mr. Walter's art is absolutely stunning. Um, it's a great comic. Coloring's awesome. Let me give some credits here. Jeff Lemire, writer, who, you know, how much I've how much I'm learning and more about him and loving everything I read of his. Gabriel Walter Art, Steve Wands, Letters, Sebastian Grenier, Editor, color, uh, Cover Art, Gabriel Walter, which is Spaceship, the USS Montgomery, Title, Jared K. Flesher, and Book Design, Jeff Powell. Um, this came from TKO Studios. It's 1999. Collects issues one through six. Um, and this is the blurb on the back. This is how much I love it. I'm going to read you a blurb. For Eisner Award winners Jeff Lemire, Black Hammer, and Gabriel H. Walta, The Vision. Oh, that's why, duh, Ross, you're a moron. That's why it looked why it looked familiar. Welcome to the USS Montgomery. When a separatist attack kills every adult on board a colony ship in deep space, it is up to Valerie, the onboard AI, to help the ship's children survive. But as they are pursued by dangerous forces, can Valerie become more than what she was programmed to be, a savior for these children? And I was complaining about AI as an, in, a, in an artistic way. I don't like the idea of art. I just, just, it tweaks me, it tweaks me. I don't want people using AIs to write scripts so they don't have to pay humans. Um, and we don't get the human element in a story. That's my vague, overly simplified take on AI. But that was a great comic book and I really, really cannot recommend it enough. Um, I think I'm going to start writing Gideon's uh, Falls. I have all but those last two trades. Um, I have been ordering some compendiums, and I did get um, the top ten and Tom Strong, both worth getting. Um, I'm going to read Invincibles, folks, so let me know what you think about Invincibles, and maybe I'll do – there's some superhero teams in them, um, and we'll do something about that. I've got Volume 2 in. Volume one's coming in the mail up on stuff. Um on the Omni front, I'm enjoying them. I've got some bids out, and if if I win one, uh, if I win the win it, win it. If I'm the high bidder and I get to buy this big bad beautiful thing, I will do something similar to if no, very similar to I've never read this, um, like I did with Fantastic Four, the first 100 issues, which I will get back to once I finish Thunderbolts. But uh, but there's there, if I get this volume is something that's going to make me try something and I hope you like it uh, and I'm kind of excited about it and maybe I'll still do it on the app but I'm just kind of using that as a convince myself why I'm going to drop the, the $20 I bid on this it's not that I didn't bid that much so alright folks uh, until next week that was enough blibber blabber um, you be safe you be smart be kind to one another please I really mean that uh, and read some comics read some golden age comics